This is the 2003 Gulfstream Friendship Class A Diesel Pusher Motorhome. It is 41 feet in length and has four slide out rooms. We will begin by walking around the coach starting on the driver's side. You will note that the coach is in the camping position, which means all four of the slides have been extended, and it is set up the way it would be when you're living in it rather than driving it. You will note the extension of the slides on the driver's side. The one toward the front is the living room and dining room area, and the one in the back is for the bedroom area. Later when we go inside, you'll see how much room that actually provides. The compartments along the bottom of the coach are what are referred to as the basement compartments. Working from the front of the coach to the rear, the first compartment located under the driver's seat is one of the electrical compartments. In it you will find breakers and fuses for many of the components on the coach. You will hear the terms house and chassis when referring to many of these components. House refers to the operation of the systems used for the living quarters and chassis refers to the operation of the vehicle. Since it's difficult to see the compartments when this slide is extended, we'll take a wider view for the next few. The second compartment is access to the propane tank. This is a 30 gallon tank and it's used for the cooking gas, the two furnaces, the refrigerator, and the water heater. The next two compartments are access to the basement storage areas. They pass through the passenger side of the coach and will be more visible from that side. The next compartment is the water heater followed by the left side of the fresh water tank. The following compartment contains the water and sewerage connections. Here you can connect your incoming water supply and your outgoing sewerage connection. There is also a handheld shower for cleanup and a spigot to connect the hose. This compartment behind the rear wheels is the electrical connection compartment. It contains your inverter, converter, and charging unit, along with your connections for incoming electrical power, as well as your connections for cable or satellite television. This compartment is the battery compartment. It contains two 12-volt batteries that operate the chassis system on the vehicle. The final compartment on the driver's side is an access panel that gets you to the engine. From here you can change the air filter, reach the exhaust, and if you crawl underneath you can view the motor. Starting again at the front of the coach on the passenger's or right side of the coach, we are now where most of your outdoor living will take place. Almost every campground is set up with a patio on this side of an RV. The first compartment is an entertainment compartment. It currently has a small refrigerator and stereo system in it, but when we travel we also install a television. The compartment is set up with connections for electricity and TV reception. The next two doors are access to the pass-through basement storage area. We saw the other side of this area from the driver's side previously. Generally, this is where we store patio chairs, beach gear, grill, portable fire pit, and an assortment of patio and entertainment equipment. The next two compartments are part of the water systems. The right side of the water tank, followed by the water manifold and drinking water filtration system. Here you can turn off or on any of the various water systems like the kitchen sink, toilet, shower, etc. You also fill or drain your water storage tank from this compartment and access the onboard water pump used when not connected to a water supply. As we continue to move from right to left, the next two compartments are electrical. First are the two house batteries that operate all of the 12 volt systems on the coach. This includes most of the lighting, 
the fresh water pump, refrigerator, ceiling fans, etc. Note some electrical systems are operated on 110 power and are only functional if you are plugged into a power source, running the generator, or the inverter. Such items are the televisions, electric water heater, microwave, and the power outlets for lamps, computers, hair dryers, etc. The final compartment is for more electrical components and contains breakers for the slide out rooms and other items. Moving back to the front of the coach, we'll now work our way to the interior or the living space inside. The main entrance door is equipped with a lighted grab handle, a patio light, and a manually operated awning. The carpeted entrance steps automatically extend whenever the door is opened. There's a switch inside to disable the power to the steps so they will remain extended when you are parked at your site. For safety, even when the step power is turned off, they will automatically retract if the engine is started. The two slide out rooms on this side of the coach are for the kitchen to the front and the bedroom to the rear. This side of the coach has a 20 foot wide power awning for providing shade and weather protection to your patio area. The awning can be operated from either inside or outside of the coach. A main power switch is located inside to prevent the outside awning switch from being operated. With the power awning retracted, you can see that each of the slide rooms is equipped with a slide topper. These are smaller awnings that roll in and out with the slide room and cover the top to prevent any debris or water from landing on the slide roof. This keeps any of that from being pulled into the coach when the rooms are retracted. Moving to the interior, we have had custom cut rugs added to protect the entrance. Also, the entrance steps are lighted with white LED lighting. Again, the coach is set up in the parked or camping mode, and this is what you'll see when you're living in it. The privacy curtains are drawn across the windshield to provide both privacy and, in hot weather, sun shading. The accent table is actually the steering wheel. The leather driver, passenger, and recliner seats can be turned to face the living area or turned to the front to view the 32-inch LED TV. There's seating for 10 when all of the seating is used in both the living and dining room areas. The driver and passenger seats move forward, back, swivel, and recline. The driver's seat is power operated. The recliner also moves forward and back, swivels and reclines, and also has a built-in footrest. The leather sofa also folds out into a full-size queen bed for guests. There are storage cabinets and a reading light above the sofa as well. The ceiling is accented with soft white LED lighting. There's also additional bright light for when it's needed. All of the cabinetry is French vanilla in color, and the countertops are white Corian. There's plenty of counter space with over-the-counter lighting and storage cabinets in the kitchen area. There's an overhead combination microwave, convection oven, and broiler with a built-in fan. There's a second vent in the hood over the two-burner cooktop, which is concealed under a cutting board that provides additional counter space when not in use. The double bowl sink also has a cutting board cover, a single handle faucet with built in dual function sprayer, and there's a separate filtered drinking water faucet. 
The kitchen is also equipped with a slide-out pantry rack for storing canned goods or boxed items. The refrigerator is a side-by-side -side unit that works on electricity when you're connected to a power source or propane when you're traveling, so you don't need to worry about food spoiling when you're on the road. Not shown here, but there's also a three-speed ceiling fan in the kitchen that is thermostatically operated and has a rain sensor that will close the cover and turn off the power when it detects rain. In the dining area is the buffet or bar, a mirrored space with Corian countertops, storage cabinets below, and a lighted wine glass rack above. The dining room table is also a Corian top, and here it is set up for two. There is also an extension leaf for the table and two upholstered folding chairs that allow seating for four. Above the dining room table, there's a chandelier, and as you can see, more storage cabinetry and a wall sconce with day and night shades on all of the windows. Additionally, all of the operating windows and the entrance door have screens to allow the breeze in and keep the bugs out. The bath area, which can be separated from the living area by a pocket door, has a brass trim sink with full medicine cabinet, two door cabinets below, a brass towel rack and a wall mounted hair dryer. The brass trim shower is accessed through a curved glass door and has a tub deep enough to take a bath. The toilet area is a separate room providing additional privacy. It has two overhead cabinets and a foot operated flushing system for the ceramic bowl. Both the toilet room and the shower have ceiling vent fans that help exhaust the steam and the odors from the rooms. One of the most useful features in this coach is the Splendid washer dryer. Although small capacity, it saves you plenty of trips to the public laundromat. There's also a large storage cabinet above for laundry supplies and more. In the bedroom, there's a large lighted dressing table with two cabinets above and two below. Included is a stool for sitting at the table and looking into the large mirror. Next to the dressing table is the bedroom TV compartment, which is at the foot of the bed. Below the TV are three deep drawers for clothing. To the right of the TV, a tall screened window. The queen size bed faces the television and a large screened window is at the head of the bed. Not shown here, to the right of the bed there is another window to provide plenty of cross breeze. All of the windows are covered with day-night blinds, and there are reading lamps as well as nightstands on either side of the bed. Six mirrored closets line the back wall of the coach. Each has lighting and hanging rods. There are also six more drawers below those closets for additional storage. At the foot of the bed is a deep cedar chest for additional blankets and linens. The next two photos are long shots of the living space. This one is taken from the rear toward the front of the living room. And this one is taken from the entrance door toward the rear of the living area. These final two photographs give you an overview of the coach and its carrying capacity. Normally, when we travel, we're pulling a 24-foot cargo trailer, which contains two motorcycles, a car, and all of our additional gear. Please see below for information on contacting us. Thank you.